Hi, this is Roger in Finland, and today we're talking about how to choose an SD card to film video in your Sony ZV-1. So for the impatient ones to be on the safe side, choose a V30 SD card, and of course if you have the money for it, the faster the better. But first of all, let's talk about the maximum data rate for video for the Sony ZV-1, and that's 100 megabits per second, 1 bit is 8 bytes, so it's 12.5 megabytes per second. That number is going to be important when we're discussing the specs of the different cards. And then to the cards. So usually on the top of the card there's a number, and that's the speed, and it's in megabytes per second. And now here I have three examples, 95 megabytes per second, 170 megabytes per second, and this one is 200 megabytes per second, but that's only the read speed. And the read speed is useful when you're actually trying to read from the card. So downloading the videos that you have in the card to the computer. And still that read speed is only the peak speed. So the maximum speed you have for reading. If you want to know the sustained speed, probably you would have to run some test on the card. Then if you want to know the write speed, you need to go and check the specs somewhere. In this particular case, the write speed for the cards that have the 95 and 170 megabytes per second is 90 megabytes per second and the write speed for the card that has 200 megabytes per second on the read speed is 130. And now probably you're thinking, right? This thing can write at 90 megabytes per second, the camera is putting out 12.5 megabytes per second, we're just fine. But that's not true just yet, because those speeds are the maximum write speed that the card can do. And the maximum is a peak, but because it's a video, you need the sustained speed. So then the next question is, how can we know which is the speed that it's sustained speed. So that's when that V30 that I mentioned for the impatient ones comes into the picture. V30 means that the card has a minimum writing speed of 30 megabytes per second, which means that at the very least, we'll have a constant speed of 30 megabytes per second or higher, which would be good. And 30 megabytes per second is more than the 12.5 megabytes per second that the Sony ZV-1 is putting out, so then we would be fine. What other speeds cards have this more modern one. So we have V6 and V10 that obviously would not be good enough because the Sony ZV-1 will be spitting out 12.5 megabits per second and those cards might not be able to keep up. V30 should be definitely enough. Then we have obviously V30, I've been talking about it, but then there's also V60 and V90. Those cards will be more future-proof when you, like, I don't know, upgrade cameras that have more data rates and whatnot, but they're also a lot more expensive. Of course, they have also faster read speeds that it's good because you're going to be downloading to the computer faster. But that's something that's a matter of patience. But if the camera cannot write into the card, that's an actual problem. And which one would I recommend? Well, this is not sponsored by anyone, but I think that the pretty good compromise nowadays is the SanDisk 170 megabytes per second because it can, you can read from it fairly fast, so the download is fairly okay. And it's a V30 card, so this will definitely be good enough. And then, of course, the capacity is a matter of choice. The bigger the card, the more you can fit. But just for you to know, if you're shooting at 100 megabits per second and your card is 128 gigabytes, you can fit into it over two hours of um, 4K footage. It's actually more than two hours and a half. And then, well, a 64 um, gigabyte card, you will be fitting in it, uh, half of it. So that's about it. I like to use 64 or 128, so I don't have any problems with the space and I empty them regularly, but that's something to think about. So hopefully this clarified a little bit the different specs of the, of the cards, why you cannot just trust that this will be definitely good enough to record video because it has a big number in here. You would have to dip a little bit deeper. You'll have to dig a little bit deeper on what is the actual minimum write speed into the card, which is what you want, and that to be higher than the data rate of the camera. So hopefully you learned something today. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And we're gonna see you soon for some more.